As we speak, delegates from around the world are gathering in Dubai as the United Nations Climate Change Conference prepares to get underway. But here at home, the ramifications of climate change are already being felt. There's no clearer sign of the impacts of climate change than right in our own ghost forests. There are large patches of dead trees and wetlands where evergreens once thrived in these ecosystems. In tonight's Prime Focus, Ginger Z takes us to one ghost forest right in our own backyard for an up-close look at why we could see more of them as climate change is felt around the world. It's the type of quiet few of us ever get a chance to hear. Does this count as my forest bathing? It does, it does. On a sweltering September day, the dense pine lands of New Jersey provide a cool reprieve. This transition from upland into wetland is yeah. critical. You'll feel the difference. And an almost mythical escape. You can feel the softer. Yes, you can feel mm -hmm. the kind of spring. Gingerly, we follow ecologist Kathleen Walls' footsteps into this vital and threatened part of our coastline. It's very dry today, but you can still see mm -hmm. the groundwater. The sphagnum moss here will actually, you know, it will, you can squeeze water out of it. Oh, wow. So it's like a sponge. Yeah. Well, it feels like a sponge. It like does. under our feet, it it's feels soft. like. It's soft. It's a little bit bouncy. Yeah. Yeah. So this is part of what makes um, the soil called peat. And so it accumulates and creates this really deep peat that is continually saturated by that groundwater. Mm -hmm. It's called the Kirkwood Cohansi Aquifer. Mm -hmm. This really large aquifer in the and that's the one that feeds drinking water to so many in New Jersey. That's correct. Lying just beneath the surface here in South Jersey flows 17 trillion gallons of fresh water. The Kirkwood Cohansi Aquifer spans nearly a third of the entire state, and it's responsible for the drinking water of nearly a million people in South Jersey. But that aquifer is useless without the Atlantic White Cedar Forest. And unfortunately, fly above us, and that lush, fruitful landscape quickly reveals a harsh reality. Thousands of dead cedars stand eerily and stretch for miles. It's what's known as a ghost forest, where the salt water invades the fresh water, rapidly killing swaths of trees. And it's not that the sea level wouldn't have slowly overtaken it. It's just that it's been happening incredibly fast, yeah? It's that it's been happening incredibly fast and that we have so little of this precious resource. Sea level has gone up four inches in 30 years, and it's expected to go up 10 times that by the end of the century. But nearly 100 years ago, New Jersey had more than 125,000 acres of Atlantic white cedar. Today, they're fighting to preserve just 25,000 acres that are left. And it's not all the salt water's fault. Part of it is because white cedar became one of the main building materials in New Jersey and Pennsylvania. Cedar had sort of been picked apart by some of those land management practices or, or land management economic decisions through mm -hmm. the centuries. And then in comes climate change. And that's sort of nipping away at, at that stronghold. We trek through a much younger and shorter Atlantic white cedar forest with New Jersey state forester Todd Wyckoff. The area? devastated by Superstorm Sandy in 2012. This is one of our cedar restoration sites here at Double Trouble State Park. This was a cedar stand that was blown down in Superstorm Sandy. And so this is uh, pretty indicative of our restoration efforts of, of cedar. So what you're seeing here is a, a full crop of, of new growth of cedar trees that through restoration efforts, uh, we're hoping will mature into a, a, a full cedar site. The lessons that they're learning here are being applied to help nature help itself. Is there a threat of not having the Atlantic white cedar here in New Jersey? I mean, I think that's one of the reasons uh, our agency, us as land managers, as stewards of the land, that's what we're here to make sure doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. But it's going to take some effort to make sure that it's in a in a stable form and in a, in a place where it can um, perpetuate itself on the landscape. It's not just the water filtration that's dependent on the vitality of the forest. These forests also serve as an efficient carbon sink, collecting atmospheric carbon and storing it deep in that peat soil. But it's also home to a vibrant and now threatened ecosystem. 
so this type of habitat is key to a whole host of species from um, larger predatory birds to mammals and um, to invertebrates and, and uh, amphibians and reptiles. So without so, the white cedar? Without the white cedar, the pine forest succeeds into this. Um, and then eventually the pine barrens want to turn into uh, uh, like an oak pine mix. And then the longer that that system has uh, no disturbance from fire and things like that, then it turns into a deciduous system. And that changing system has already threatened certain species of snakes, birds, and plants. Just another reason to invest in saving it now. When we're talking about a ghost forest and how quickly we may lose right. an ecosystem like this, why does that matter? The legacy, the legacy of these special places on the landscape, I think of as a living museum. You can go to the Museum of the American Museum of Natural History and see panoramas with animals, and you can see dinosaur fossils and minerals. You can go to a botanical garden and see plants. Mm -hmm. But if you want to see how they are, this is the living museum of ecosystems on these protected lands. Mm -hmm. I want my daughter, my grandchildren, I want many generations to be able to come here and experience what it's like to, to walk into a forest like this. Future generations may be dependent upon that. Our thanks to Ginger for that. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.